you guys, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my anxieties as a writer and how I get over them. So I thought this is um, something that I should make because I am I do plan on filming more writing vlogs in the future. I don't know exactly how I'm going to format them or how like how like that's going to work. But I do plan on filming more of them. I just like the reading vlog. I just like writing vlogs. I love um, showing you guys my writing process and my newly updated writing process and kind of how I get to write throughout the day and how I make time for that and whatnot with two jobs and well now I'm not a full-time student but back then I was. So naturally there's going to be some um, anxieties with that and while everyone kind of deals with it in different ways this is kind of how I um, have gotten over them or how I continue to get over them or maybe just kind of how I have my friends help me get through this. On top of that, I also was having some anxiety about it the other night, so I thought that um, I might as well share it with you and kind of turn this into a weird therapy kind of session for me. But without further ado, let's just jump right in. So the first um, bit of anxiety on this list is kind of a general one, one that we all kind of deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, whether you're an artist or someone who does sports or even in your just general field, and that's just feeling like you're not going to be good enough, you're not going to get anywhere, you're kind of an average person doing this average thing. Um, and that, like I said, it's natural. It's a natural feeling, and that's kind of how I tell myself, and how I have my friends tell me when I'm having going through these things. It's natural to feel that um, you are not good enough. That's normal. It's something we see day to day. It's not a big deal if you don't feel like you're good enough. It's something you'll just have to jump. Like, it's a hurdle you'll have to get through, but it's not one. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it's not one that you should be worried about because as long as you keep striving for that goal and you keep bettering yourself, you will be good enough. There is no, am I. How, what do I have to do? It's just something that comes along throughout the way. The um, second anxiety that I have is not having original ideas. Now this is something that a lot of um, creative writers have to deal with, something a lot of artists have to deal with. It's just not being creative in general or like not having original ideas that people will like and people will enjoy or people will pick up on. Now the one thing that I kind of learned with this is um, no idea is ever original. Let's face it. We have we, this earth has been around for thousands, for, not even thousands, a lot of years. I don't even want to count that. Millions of years? And humans have been around for roughly around, roughly less than that. So there's no such thing as an original idea. We, if yet, if, yeah. if I could count on my fingers how many times I've heard the word Beauty and the Beast, Beauty and the Beast retelling, Beauty and the Beast retelling, Beauty and the Beast retelling, Cinderella retelling, all that stuff, then you would come to see that there's not a lot of like there's not a lot of like base original ideas anymore, and that's okay. That is fine. But however, it doesn't matter if you feel like your idea is not original. Like how many things of dragons have we heard about, really, or mermaids, or princesses who find the prince, or some weird like um, bachelorette idea, or some dystopian future that we have to face in the future kind of thing. Like, that's okay if you feel like it's not original. What makes it original and what makes it good for readers to pick up on, for your audience to see, is how you twist it, how you turn your characters inside and out, how you make them your own. It doesn't matter if you're rewriting the 100th Rapunzel retelling. What matters is that you have changed Rapunzel. You have made her someone we can um, agree with, someone we can all see and someone that we love, you have changed the original plot, so like you see Rapunzel there, but it's not Rapunzel. Does that make sense? That's kind of how I get through that. This is one that I can't necessarily ask my friends to do to help me get over because I just can't ask them to be like, tell me my idea is not original. Because they, or like, tell me my idea is original, but because they can't. They've seen these things written or talked about a thousand times. They've seen it on TV and movies. But what does make it original is how we create the characters and how we twist the plot and make it so it's not that cookie cutter kind of thing that we grew up reading about. The third book, the third book, wow, the third um, 
bit of anxiety I have as a writer is, um, is it making any sense? Like, let's face it, when you're writing in your head, like, especially like those, like, 12 a.m. or 2 a.m. writing, you're like, yes, this is the best idea in the world, and then you're editing, and you're like, what the heck was I thinking? Why? But, um, like I said, does it make any sense? It's kind of a big thing, because we want our, like, we want our, the readers and our audience to know what we're trying to say, and if it doesn't make sense, it's, mm. But my thing is, of course it makes sense. However, you shouldn't be looking over it until you're done writing the draft. Something I learned was that if I did try to um, read over things after I had written them, like say I'd write five chapters and I go back and read them, mm -mm. my anxiety would go up, I'd feel worse about myself because there were things that didn't come back that should have come back in that chapter that I had forgotten about or had gotten glazed over later on, which is okay. But like I said, you, you you just can't look at it while you're writing. Just write everything out on the page. If it makes sense in your head and you know where you want to go in the future, write it down and then go ahead and in re in, while you're rewriting, go ahead and add those edits in. That's kind of the best way to do it. From what I, from my own personal experience, and having to be like, why did I say that when this should have been said instead? You have that option. It's nothing is set in stone, even though it is a piece of paper. You can literally like start snipping words out and repasting it if you wanted to. My, this, the fourth one is kind of a big one for me. It's one that I ask my um, significant other quite often. It's one that I ask my friends quite often, and something that I still struggle with today, and that every writer I feel struggles with more than plenty of enough times in their lifetime. And that is, will I ever get published? Now, that's kind of a toughie because there's so many mediums to publishing now that your version of publish is different from my version or how I want to be published. And being published isn't always easy and it's hard and everyone knows that. That's like the, the biggest thing that we see when we're looking at how to get published is it's hard. And it's, I feel like that's really kind of discouraging for a young aspiring writer to see so often. But my thing is, of course you'll get published. There will be times when you're going to get rejection letters upon rejection letters, and you're probably going to have a wall filled with them waiting for that one like acceptance letter or like that one letter saying, yes, we're going to publish you. Or you're going to end up having your cats or dogs eating the, um, the paper, or like you'll print out the email and shove it in their face and tell them to eat it, just so you can have that, pl that feeling of being like, hey, hey, well, it doesn't matter now. But... Of course you're going to get published with the right persistence. You have to do your options, go through them and see, like, is this the one that I want? Do I want to do online media? Do I want to do self-publishing? Do I want to do traditional? Kind of what makes sense to you and how that will make you feel better about the situation. But if, if you're going to do the traditional route, you have to understand that you can't give up right away. Like, we hear that all the time. You can't give up. You can't give up. And I feel like that's something that we really need to ingrain in ourselves that if we do get those rejections, those constant rejections, someone somewhere will find one of our stories worth publishing and that is all that we can ask for. Our version of success is vastly different from everyone else's and we have to keep our idea of success in line with how we want this to go. Now the next one is, somewhat, is something that I feel like is also another generalized kind of thing and that's what if people won't like it? Now I, like the words not liking it like this writing this question made my heart stop because I was like I want everyone to like my writing why can't they like my writing but something that I've learned from having to write fan fiction online or sharing some of my works online is that not everyone's gonna like it and that's okay you're in booktube you have books that you despise you have books that you love and I'm sure that those those authors that you like despise or love so much are have prob people have ooh probably have people who feel the same way or don't feel the same way about their writing and that's okay like no one's gonna like it not every book is your is gonna be your cup of tea is not gonna be their cup of tea so therefore we shouldn't ask our readers to f force it to be their cup of tea and that's okay like I feel like you can learn something from every negative review unless they're being dicks about it then you can't learn anything from that. You just can't. Now, this, the sixth one, one, two, three, four, five, six, yes, the sixth one is one that I struggle with because I have a lot of ongoing writing projects, stuff that I probably shouldn't have started, but people enable me, and now here I am. But that is, will I ever finish anything? 
And that's, I feel like, a really big one because as writers, we like to have a lot of different projects going on. Our brains are wired to keep writing even though we don't want it to. But my thing is just work, of course you're going to finish that one book that you've been writing for years and years and years, but you've been putting aside because you have 20 different projects in your head, you just have to work, you're going to finish it, you just have to work at one, on one thing at a time. You, like, I know it's going to be tough, but like, say, like me, I currently have six projects going on, and I want to finish the sixth one that I just started and get that one out. I said this a thousand times about every other book on this list, but whatever. My thing is, I'm going to give myself one week in each month to write the other five. Like, write one chapter in each of them. Like, these aren't, these fi th this five is not my, f the ones I want to get published. This one, however, this one, better with the f index, is. So I have to put all my priority on that, but I can't burn myself out writing it. So, of course, we're going to have these five. I'm just going to go back and alternate between these five during that one week I give myself to write about something else. Now, this one is kind of like a long list of questions that we all get when we're writing and we're trying to share the stuff and we're like reading our, our stuff back and you're like, I can't do this. And that's does the plot make sense? Do the characters make sense? Is there symbolism? Some bigger message? Something that someone else will get out of it aside from the thing that's written on the page? And my answer to that is, duh. Of course, I'm pretty sure that when someone's writing these books that we've read before, if they didn't think about it without the bigger message, or like had a bigger message planned, something came from it. A bigger message came from it. Symbolism came from it. The characters all came together. But the thing is, worry about that when you're done. Don't try to plan symbolisms or metaphors or however you want to do it in your writing. Worry about that when you're done. Let your writing just flow naturally and your mind will come up with the symbolism on its own. You are a reader and, but first and foremost before you are a writer. You know how these things work and they will come to you naturally. So you don't have worry about it when you're done. You will go ahead, do the first draft, word vomit, put it away, and then edit and rewrite. You can add all those other things that you're worried about in the rewriting process, but during this first draft process, don't worry about it. The last and final um, thing, I don't know what number we're at, seven, eight. My last and final piece of anxiety that I always have to deal with is what do I do if nothing makes sense? Now the thing is, I feel like this is something that doesn't come until you're done and you're, mm, and you're rereading it and you're like, holy shit, nothing makes sense. But that's what revision and rewriting is for. You, you can go ahead and print out your paper or do it on Google Docs and have people rip it to shreds from your friends. Take your color, your set, all of your colored pencils and all of your colored pens to it, and like start writing things in and saying this could be adjusted. That is what that process is for. My creative writing professor told me that new writers will have about three drafts of their book. Great experienced writers will have about ten. So you can tell that this isn't a quick and easy process. It takes time and you will craft it however you do. You just have to write the first draft. So you got this. But those are kind of my things as a writer, as someone who deals with anxiety on top of being a writer. And I thought that maybe I could get a therapy session out of this and get it through and get everyone else to like, maybe you pick something, you, you found a way to pick up on this or you were having anxiety about it and you found something helpful. In which case I am happy for that, yay. But other than that, I will see you guys on Saturday. If you guys share any of these anxieties, please leave them in the comment below and we can have a nice discussion. But other than that, I'll see you guys sad yeah, Saturday. Bye.